So I'd like to welcome you all to this webinar about um, two programmes that we have um, on offer here in the School of Agriculture and Food Science. And um, for those of you who are aware, um, the UCD School of Agriculture and Food Science has um, graduate programmes as well as undergraduate programmes, but um, our school is one of UCD's largest um, and also top performing schools with more than 81 research active staff. And we have a whole range of undergraduate and graduate programmes in the area of science and business. And it goes right the way across the agriculture, food, health and environmental food chains. So tonight um, I'm going to be kind of your compare and um, I'm Charlene O'Reilly. I'm an associate dean here in the school for teaching and learning. And so this evening, we're going to be discussing and hearing from two um, lovely program directors who are connected with our programs in the area of agricultural science and also rural development. So um, perhaps maybe if we if we kick off with um, Kieran, um, do you want to kind of give us a quick overview of yourself, who you are, and maybe the program that you're representing here tonight? Certainly. Um, thanks a million, Charlene. I'd just like to say welcome to everyone who's joined us online and who watched this, who watches this um, recording. Um, my name is Kieran Mead. I'm an associate um, professor of immunobiology um, within the School of Agriculture and Food Science here in UCD. And as Charlene said, we're one of the leading schools uh, with a unique offering of agriculture and food science courses under the one umbrella. And it's just one of many strengths that UCD has. But well, I'm I'm representing here tonight as I'm program director for a new MSc program in animal science. In fact, it's broader than just the MSc in animal science. There's lots of entry levels and exit routes for people who are interested in taking a smaller chunk, be it a certificate or a diploma or doing a full MSc. So what we did um, in 2020 and 2021 is we did an investigation into the need for an MSc by talking to stakeholders within the agri-food sector. And multiple stakeholders supported the concept of advanced training in animal science for people to occupy leadership positions within animal science. So in response to that stakeholder survey, we designed this new MSc in animal science. And we started, we launched it in 2022, and now we're recruiting for year three of our MSc program. So the MSc has grown and we've designed it. And it's a unique offering in the sense that it's been designed to be very flexible. It's designed for what's called asynchronous learning. So you don't need to be present um, um, when the lectures are being given. The lectures will be delivered remotely and I believe passionately that this is a very important educational offering, because although there are challenges with online learning, given the, the, the problems we have with the cost of living crisis and the accommodation crisis, it democratizes um, education in many respects that we can offer these online courses so people anywhere in the world can take these MSc programs um, at a time um, of their choosing. So the MSc in Animal Science is a flexible program. It's completely online. It's asynchronous, as I said, and it's designed for people to upskill either in a small chunk or a larger MSc program um, for people who are working, for example, and they can choose the part-time options. We have full-time and part-time options. The full-time program runs over 12 months and it's, a, it's an intensive 12 months or students can opt for the part-time program, which is a two-year Option. So I'm hoping to get the opportunity to discuss in more detail with anybody who's interested in this MSc program. So please be brave, ask questions. Um, um, there's no such thing as a bad question. So please put, put the questions into the chat function. And of course, at the end of this, we will give our contact details as well. So we're more than happy to answer any queries that people might have, Charlene. So well, back to you. That's super. Thanks for meeting Kieran. Um, I might jump over to Tomas just so that people can get a flavour of what the two programmes are about. So, so Tomas, do you want to give us kind of an outline about the programme you're here representing tonight and a little bit about yourself? That'd be lovely. Yeah, thanks very much, Charlene. Um, yeah, so just to welcome everyone uh, again to this evening's session. Um, so my name is Tomas Russell. I am programme director for the Masters in Agricultural Extension and Innovation here at UCD. So this program is what we might call a, a social and behavioral science uh, program 
which really looks at um, training people to support farmers with behaviour change. So a lot of the graduates that come out of our programme go into roles where they're working with farmers on a day-to-day -day basis, whether that's advisory, consultancy, agri-sales, agri-media, any job that's sort of farmer facing or front facing. So that's the, the whole focus of the master's program. So it's very different to, um, you know, to understanding maybe how grass grows and that and more understanding the people side of it. So really understanding how we can support farmer behavior change. So we have a number of programs and uh, hopefully I'll get to talk about them throughout the session and answer any questions that, that people might have on them. We have um, a one year full time program that's based here in New City from September to September. We have a part time online program. And then we have a number of funded opportunities. Um, one funded opportunity with Chagas, where you're based in a Chagas office doing advisory or education work for 24 months. And then we have part funded options by Mokra Agriculture Skillnet for those that are working in the industry. So I'll hand back over to you, Sherman. Super. Thanks, Amelia. So, I mean, I think um, it's really it's really fabulous that you've got these flexible offerings um, that are going to go out um, and be available for students, particularly when people are thinking about, you know, doing something after they've done their first course. So perhaps um, could I get maybe you, Kieran, to talk about maybe what makes this program unique for students and what will make them stand out in the crowd um, for employers going forward? Yeah, thanks, Charlene. So a lot of it um, is coming from stakeholder feedback where when we did our survey we asked them really what skills do the animal scientists of the future need and they came back to us with a lot of feedback and we have used that feedback to specifically design this course so the course is addressing those skills gaps now it's it's very interesting talking to some of the stakeholders because the feedback we got was not necessarily that people needed additional subject detail, but they need a lot of ancillary or support skills, which you might call transferable skills around communications, around innovation, around problem solving skills, around, you know, industry facing and, and, and so on. So all those are reflected in the modules that are available on this MSc. So the MSc is designed to help people um, you know, develop their own um, um, skill set and become leaders within the animal science space. So it's it's unique in many regards because we're building on the UCD strengths, some of which we've mentioned already. But one of the strengths is that we have subject leaders and subject experts within UCD. We're very lucky to have this level of expertise. So these are people who are writing the textbooks, who are um, on international committees and are doing research in each of these areas. So the, the, the content that you are being taught is cutting edge. So it's uh, that's a critical finding because many times students you know, might not consider that and how important it is because um, having that expertise available to you is, a, is very valuable. So the MSc is designed to fill those gaps in expertise, those skills that you need. They're delivered by subject experts and it's delivered and available to you in an online and flexible format. So you can choose, there's no core modules and you, it's completely flexible um, um, content. And the idea is for each of those subject experts to teach their discipline um, to a greater degree of detail than they otherwise could. So it's not a it's not an entry level MSc. There are other MSc programs within UCD for people who want to change discipline or change area. For animal science, this is really to get in um, deep into the, the theory and the practical um, know-how and expertise within animal science. So if I was to give you some examples, um, we have a module on sustainable livestock systems, for example. So we all know, you know, for to talk to students, we all know that sustainability, the planet depends on farming systems becoming more sustainable. So, but the answer, the, 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 it's easy in a way to um, find fault or find issue. What's much more challenging and what the graduates from this program need to do is become part of the and um, providing the solutions for the future. So what you learn is the most cutting edge science around sustainable livestock systems. And then when you're out in employment and um, in the sector, you can use that knowledge to really, um, you know, 
push your expertise, develop your skill set and, and become a leader in this space. So there's there's many other examples that I can talk about if we've time later on, Charlene, about, about other modules and what they offer. Um, but another very quick example might be around communications and agri-innovation. That's another module that we offer on the MSE. And this is delivered in conjunction with journalists and directors. We have a director from RTE on, on, the, on the guest lecture panel. We have... Um, AgTech UCD. AgTech is a business incubation unit based out on Lions Farm and UCD. So it's it's you're you're really the students are going to be exposed to the um to the the the, the thought leaders and the and the practitioners within this space. So you know you're really learning cutting edge skills. Another within the same module we have career development officers who have a lot of experience within UCD to really help you see the opportunity, the value of communication, but see the the opportunity for you to grow in that space and develop your skills and expertise there so the modules really have a lot of thought gone into them and they've been delivered by subject experts and and um, are available um, as i said in a completely online and flexible format now it is important to say for anyone interested in these msc programs that um you know online online learning does require discipline you, you you know it's easy if you don't have your peers around you and you don't have a very tight structure it can be easy to kind of disconnect so that's why these programs these online programs are most effectively delivered at postgraduate level and um, it's really for those students who have the discipline and and see a career path that they want to occupy and use this MSc as a stepping stone to getting there super thanks Kieran. Um, I think it's lovely that you've highlighted the the level of expertise that we have within the, the school because um, UCD Ag Science is ranked 24th in the world globally and number six in Europe. So, I mean, we definitely are leaders in the field considering Ireland is only a small country. We definitely um, are competing there internationally and our research team goes across both the school itself, but we have the Institute of Food and Health we also have Rosemount, which is an environmental research station, as well as what you mentioned there, the UCD Lions Farm, which conducts pioneering interdisciplinary research. And it's 100, 250 hectares of um, a center of excellence in animal crop, food and veterinary sciences. So it really is the jewel in the crown of UCD's offerings that we have a live working um, research farm um, that is able to be accessed by our students. Now, obviously the students are going to be online, but there are ways and means around that. And I think um, you might, um, or maybe even Thomas might be able to talk about how we integrate, say something like Lions Farm into our online offering. So Thomas, I don't know, can you um, speak to that? Um, yeah, well, I suppose generally on our particular programs in the Ag Extension, we wouldn't integrate um, too much in terms of lines, but we, I suppose, our programs are well established or going for over 10 years. So we've integration across the, the industry. So a lot of programs and um, a lot of graduates are working with Chagas and we have funding opportunities with Chagas. So we've we work very closely with Chagas and the private consultants organization and um, to, to integrate uh, the learnings with them. And a lot of students will end up either taking placement with those or end up in employment with, with those particular ones. But I think that the lines link would be closer with Kieran's program. Yeah, I, I can pick up on that, Moss. The um, we, we've tried to we've really put some thought into you know how can we make the research come alive. One of the another module, uh, some of the modules I mentioned already, Charlene, but there's another one which is research proposal. And sometimes students can be a bit reluctant to take on a research proposal module, but of course when you reflect on it, research, regardless of what position you're in in life, in government, in policy, in education, all decisions are made on the base or should be made on the basis of evidence. And that evidence comes from research. So we try to illustrate the research that's occurring on the farm. Now, again, as Charlene mentioned, that's a challenge with an online program. But we have offered, for example, for people who are around Dublin, there's a day tour to, to UCD because a key concept I always make to the students is, you know, building connections and building your network is really important. So even though it might be only one day in Lions, 
you know, you get to meet the research leaders and build build that connection network. And the career advisors talk about, you know, building your network through through LinkedIn, through doing things called informational interviews, for example. So there's lots of ways to build that network. Lions is a part of it. And we're also looking at other technologies like drone technology, for example, to try and bring the research to life for students in an online program. Now, that is a challenge, um, admittedly. Um, online learning is not perfect. It does have some strengths, as I've um, outlined already, but it does require students to kind of be engaged and to maximise the opportunities put in front of them, which is, for example, includes talking to each of the module coordinators. We all run evening tutorials, for example, where the students are, in, are incur, um, encouraged to learn in an online learning environment. So they talk to each other as well as talking to the module coordinators and the subject experts. So you're exposed to a lot of people, but of course, if you sit in the background and don't engage, well then it's it's hard to maximize the opportunity in front of you. So it's it's really, and I'm sure Tomas would support that as well. It's, it's really all about trying to, you know, build that environment, build that networking opportunity and getting students to really interact because you get the most out of it that way. Super. So Tomas, can I ask you, in terms of the career opportunities for graduates from your programs, could you give us some examples of where your graduates have gone to um, yep. or where you see them going? Yeah, absolutely. So I suppose given the nature of the program, most of the graduates would end up in ag advisory services. So whether that's working with Chagas as advisor specialists or in the education side, so in some of the agricultural colleges, are also in private consultancy, so um, under the umbrella of the Agricultural Consultants Association. So there's loads of opportunities there. And again, as I mentioned earlier, it's really any job that is sort of farmer facing and, um, you know, and people are working with farmers to try and support change. So again, a lot of graduates would end up in the Department of Agriculture working as um, assistant agriculture inspectors. A lot of people working in agri-sales, agri-media and um, mediation. Again, anything that they're, that puts them in a position to to be supporting farmer change or supporting farmer to, farmers to uh, either upscale or change their business. Great. Um, and so in terms of the actual how to apply for these different uh, programs, are there any pieces of information that either of you think would be important to highlight to potential future students that they need to consider when they're thinking about applying for these courses? Yeah, we'd love to kick off there. Um, so the entry requirements for our online program, it's a level level nine MSc program. So you need to have a level eight degree in a relevant discipline. So um, there are some exceptions to that if people are at a senior level in industry for a number of years. So we would encourage people who think they might be eligible to, to contact the program office and or myself, and we can assess their, their applications. Um, so yeah, so it's a, it's a level eight degree is is what's required, and that's the same whether you're coming in for a certificate for a diploma or for the MSc um modules, um or sorry program MSc program. So I would encourage people to look at the UCD website. If you Google MSc in animal science, you will come across the UCD um URL, and there's details there, including some career information. Although the MSc in animal science were at an earlier stage of development than say Tomas's MSc, which is which is a long track record. So, um, so yeah, I'd encourage people to check out the MSc, check out the, the the UCD website. Great, thanks, Kieran. Tomas, do you have any other things that you think people need to be aware of? Yeah, just similar to Kieran, you must have uh, your level eight degree in a relevant discipline, uh, particularly for the the masters in agricultural extension innovation. Often people think that you must have an ag science background or a science background, and that's not the case. You can have any come from any background. I suppose one if you're in one of the criteria is that you're interested in working with farmers. So that can be from a legal background, a business background, a social science background, a health science background. It doesn't really matter once you're in a position where you'd like to work with farmers. Um, in terms of applying, you can apply through ucd.ie forward slash apply, and that's for the one year full time program. Uh, but I'd highly encourage everyone to have a look at the UCD Ag Food um, page on the website where there's details of the scholarships on the Ag Extension program. So there's a list of how to apply. So if you're applying for the Chagas funded program, there's a separate application link. And likewise, if you're applying for the Skillnet part funding, there's a separate application link there. So it's all on the UCD website. And um, the link has just appeared in the chat below. So if anybody wants that one in particular, and um, you can go and have a look at that there. 
Um, so we've had two sort of relatively similar questions put into the chat and they relate to whether or not there are scholarship opportunities available for students who are based overseas into, in this case, both questions relate to the animal science program. But um, so Kieran, would you be able to speak to that? Yeah, so um, we we very much welcome international applications. We have a number of people, um, a number of people who are overseas currently taking the MSc. However, there are not scholarship opportunities available um, for online programs. There, the, the the UCD scholarships apply to in person programs. So, unfortunately, that they won't be available for the for the online programs. Um, I'm not sure as to the range of other and um, maybe national um, scholarship programs available to you, but yeah, it's it's um not that I'm aware of. There, there. I know for Tomas's MSc, there are some funding mechanisms that he has mentioned, and maybe can can talk a bit more about that at the moment. And um, though I'm not aware of scholarship opportunities for the masters in animal science. Tomas, I don't know. Do you do you think you need to add anything else in there? Um. Do you know um, how many numbers of uh, scholarships there are available through your, the funding mechanisms? Yeah, just to add um, on the Agricultural Extension Programme, there are around 18 to 20 um, funded scholarships through Chagas. Now, unfortunately, they're just for, uh, th there's certain criteria for that. They're just for Irish students who have an Ag Science degree for that particular programme, and that's due to the Department of Agriculture and Food in Ireland. They have special requirements to be Farm Advisory Service approved. Um, so that's just for that program. Um, for Mokra Agriculture Skillnet, they part fund up to 30% um, at the, the fees, and there is around 15 positions on that. And again, they're open to, to applications. Um, and then with the one year full time program, we have some scholarships with uh, an organization called FDC. Now, them scholarships don't become available on their only available for students who have enrolled on the Agricultural Extension and Innovation Program um, and then can apply for the scholarship. Very much, Tomas. There's been a, just a question put into the um, chat box there. Um, can you please give some more information regarding digital technology for sustainable agriculture's course? Um, yeah. Anybody answer that? I'm I'm not sure we're, we're best placed, but I mean, there's definitely um, the the School of Biosystems. Um, runs this digital technology um, MSc as far as I know maybe Georgina um, knows more but um, that's that's something that you know we can provide details for the program office where you could follow up that that query for that particular MSc that's not one of the ones in our portfolio tonight Charlene yeah absolutely um and I know there's there is a new um undergraduate program that's going to be started here in in the School of Agriculture and Food Science about sustainable food systems. So I don't know if people are interested in that, then that might be something to look at. But if you're not interested in undergraduate programs, then clearly that's not going to hit the brief. Um, but definitely um looking um within UCD more broadly, if it's outside of our school, then you'll clearly be able to access a bit more information on that. Um, okay. I'll just send a link through there for that for that person. Thanks very much, Kieran. So I don't know. Um, do you have anything else that you think you've missed that you might want to highlight for potential future students? Um, that any new modules that have been created that potentially might be of interest to them that have might, been based um, on student feedback or employer feedback. I might jump in there, Charlene, if that's okay. Um, I suppose just one of the important things to note, particularly on the Ag Extension Programme, is that there's such a variety of different options that's available and, and similarly on Kieran's programme. So it's really important that if people are interested in the programmes that they do, you know, have a look at the website, but feel free to contact us as well, because sometimes, you know, I know when students contact me and they say, look, this is my area of interest, or this is what I'd like to do, or this is, you know, the career that I'd like to move into, that we can advise them, whether it's, you know, the Ag Extension Masters and which um, approach they should take or which option that they, they should take. And likewise, which modules then they should select within that. Or then maybe you might say, actually, the Animal Science Masters is a more suitable master's for you. So I just really encourage people to to make sure and contact us, um, whether it's by email or phone or whatever. Um, and we'll really try and advise them and support them in, in making the right decision when it comes to the master's programme. 
Totally agree. I don't know, Kieran, did you have anything else that you needed to add there? Yeah, and and um, just as Tomas said, you know, a really valuable opportunity can be to talk to graduates on the program. So we run regular post-grad, um, say, fairs or re recruitment days where we advertise our different programs and we often bring students along to those. So to meet people who are on the program will really give you a good feel for that program. So maybe just in in a couple of, of, of um, reflections maybe on our course is that we're, we're continually kind of revising and adding new modules to it. So we have a relatively straightforward structure where we have, because it's an MSc in animal science, we've block a with core animal science modules to choose a certain number of as I said, no, there's no mandatory um module but you need to choose within that folder of animal science so we have for example advanced reproduction genetics and genomics and um, i teach the animal health and immunology um, module and one health of course um as well under that program um advanced animal nutrition. So there's many animal science core modules there, but then within the block B of the program, we have a number of those transferable skills like communication, statistical analysis, research skills, and um, agri-innovation. So there's a whole um, portfolio of skills that you can use to, to benefit from and develop your skills and expertise. And this year in particular, we're particularly excited to have a new module um, coming in for 2024, for autumn 2024 on animal welfare, science and society, because as we know, um, animal welfare has always been important, but um, it's critically important now that when less and less people are involved in farming and the consumer is so interested in where their food comes from, and rightly so, that we want to um, engage with society at a, at a broader level and, and discuss the science behind animal welfare so everyone is making informed decisions and improving the welfare of the animal. So that's a new module which is coming on stream for 2024. And we're very excited about that. Brilliant. Thanks, Kieran. So I've got um, somebody who would like to ask a question. Um... So maybe perhaps um, I'm going to allow you to talk now. So if that student or potential guest would like to talk, then um, fire ahead. Yeah, hello. Hi. Hello, Christian. Yeah, nice to be here and to be part of this um, Zoom meeting. I'm Christian and I'm from DRC, DR Congo, and actually I'm an agronomist and uh, I have applied for master degree in sustainable uh, development and agriculture rural at UCD. But uh, you just mentioned uh, something interesting about a grad, a grad master degree in animal science. So my question is just, um, uh, I would like to know uh, why ma uh, master degree in animal science is not uh, taken at UCD because it's just online. Uh, where we know that, you know, this kind of master degree needs practice. So how come people or students can, you know, can, can, can move to no, uh, 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 theoretical notions to practical notions when, while it's just online? And what the, the real, um, what, the, the, what the cause that is still in online system at UCD? So I would like to know why, why is uh, the master degree in animal science is, is just provided in, in online form? So thank you. Yeah, thank you for your question, Christian. So we're at we're at the early stages of program development. We are discussing other delivery options for this MSc going forward. But initially, my um, my interest was because of the challenges with um, accommodation and and costs, as I've mentioned. And um, we we got the MSc up and running in online format. So it's also important to remember that this is advanced animal science. So we're building on an undergraduate degree program. So with people who are coming into this degree have usually got Got a lot of practical skills already either themselves from farming directly or as part of their professional work experience i know some of the graduates in ucd for example may have spent eight or nine months out on farm developing their practical skills the point you're making it's very, very important. We do need practical skills. We would love to have everyone come to Lyons and to do some research projects and so on, but actually that's too much of a challenge within 12, 12 months. So it's a it's a trade-off and it's, it's something that we might um, revisit in future, but at the moment, for those reasons, the program is delivered exclusively online. Okay. Thanks very much, Kieran. Um,
Um, we just, just to let you know, there is lots and lots of testimonials in our social media as well as the YouTube site for the school. Um, and that also provides advice around what programs are best fits for different types of students. Um, so if you're interested, that could also be somewhere that you find a little bit more information about why choose a certain program. And um, if you're kind of on the fence around which one to actually go for. Um, but I, I, I think I agree with you, Kieran, in terms of, you know, different programs have different strengths of offerings in terms of, um, you know, the way with which you apply the knowledge can be done remotely for a lot of the cases and don't always necessarily require that face to face or hands on piece if they have the core skills sort of developed in their undergraduate or maybe even through work practice, etc. So I, I think, um, you know, as you said, it's a program that's going to constantly evolve and then perhaps if something does need to be changed that you'll look at that into the future so it's great to hear that you're, you're kind of flexible and also looking to to grow and develop the program so i don't know if anybody has any final comments that you want to add but um i'm aware that we're trying to keep these nice and short so that people can listen to them um offline as well so if there's any more questions or any closing comments that you want to to raise, either Kieran or Tomas? Um, I'd be happy to let you have the floor. Just, just a final comment there. Sorry, Tomas. Just a final comment about career opportunities. I don't, I don't think I mentioned that. Ours is a very early program, so we we've, we've had a small number of graduates from the program so far. But really, what we're looking at is that I am, um, you know, it, it's a it's a platform for people to go on into a PhD with the latest knowledge, and then in the PhD they can focus more on the research once they have the they're better equipped and, and informed with the with the MSc program. But also, um. People will end up in policy, in pharmaceutical positions, in government positions, working with Chagas and so on. And that's based on the communications we've had with all the stakeholders in this area. So um, all I can say for now is watch this space. Yeah. And yeah. yeah. Just to emphasize the point I made earlier, you know, please do, if anyone is interested, uh, reach out and talk to us, because I think that's probably the most important. Again, we can chat about your own situations and career aspirations. And I think that's where you can really get an understanding. You know, everyone has specific questions on, on a program and specific goals. So that's where we can really help you and just that we're, we're open and willing to address any of those questions. Yeah, I think that's a, a lovely point to, to end on them all. So I have to say that it's been my experience that all of the program directors are really, really open to just dis discussing what your situation is. So if you want to have that one to one kind of chat with a program director and say, well, this is my situation. Do you think this is a good match for me or not? I have to say most program directors, you know, find the time either via email or, you know, to arrange a time for a Zoom call, etc actually just get help you get to the end of your, your your query as whether or not you should become a student on their course because we're invested in helping you get the most out of your programs when you do enroll. So um I suppose on that note um I'd like to thank you all for taking the time to dial in tonight and um or today and um, depending on where you are in the world and um I look forward to potentially hearing from you in the future and um yeah thanks Moss and thanks Kieran for your time.